gentlemen. Good day and welcome to the SBI Life Insurance Company Q1 FY24 Results Conference Call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode. There will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star and then zero on your touchtone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Mahesh Kumar Sharma, MD and CEO, SBI Life. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, good evening, everyone. We welcome you all to the results update call of SBI Life Insurance for the quarter ended June 30, 2023. We thank you wholeheartedly for your time invested in our analysis. Update on our financial results can be accessed on our website as well as on the websites of both the stock exchanges. Along with me, I have S. Veera Raghavan, Deputy CEO, Sangramji Sarangi, President and CFO, Ravi Krishnamurti, President Operations and IT, Abhijit Gulanikar, President Business Strategy, Subhendu Bal, Chief Actuary and Chief Risk Officer, Fitesh Chobe, Appointed Actuary, and Smita Verma, SVP Finance and Investor Relations. As you are aware, the Board of Directors has appointed Mr. Amit Jhingran as the MD and CEO designate of the company for a period of two years subject to the approval of AIRDA and shareholders' approval. Amit has been my colleague at SBI and I want to assure you all that the company's growth trajectory and objective of creating long-term value will remain unchanged and my team and I personally will ensure the smoothest leadership transition of the company. Moving to performance update, our comprehensive product suite aligned with customers' need coupled with our continued focus on improving the quality of business, maintaining a best-in-class cost ratio and persistency levels has led to a decent performance on an exceptionally high base of last year's June quarter. During this quarter, we have taken a few tactical calls like strengthening market position in annuity business and investing in capacity building for employees and distributors with respect to handling the emerging needs of the customers and to support long-term growth. Now let me give brief highlights of our performance for this June quarter. New business premium registered a growth of 11% over the previous quarter and stands at 62.1 billion, leading to private market leadership. Individual new business premium stands at 40.6 billion, with a strong growth of 18% and private market share of 26.8%. Gross written premium stands at 135.6 billion, a growth of 19%. Protection new business premium grew by 12% to 7.8 billion. For profit after tax stands at 3.8 billion with 45% growth over the last period. Value of new business stands at 8.7 billion. Uh, new business margin is at 28.8% in June 22. Assets under management grew by 25% to 3.28 3 uh, trillion. A robust solvency ratio of 2.15 as against the regulatory requirement of 1.5. We shall now update you on each of the key elements in detail. Let me start with the premium. Individual new business premium has grown to 40.6 billion with a YOY growth of 18%. Single premium contribution is 38% of individual new business premium, which is mainly attributed to growth in our individual annuity product. The company gained private market share by 2 trillion basis points to 26.8%. On individual rated new business premium, we stand at 26.7 billion with a growth of 3% over the previous period and maintaining our leadership position with private market share of 23%. As mentioned in my opening remarks, this is on the high base of last year's quarter one performance, which was one of the industry best with a growth of 86%. Also, new group new business premium stands at 21.5 billion with a share of 35% in new business premium. Having said that, we have collected total new business premium of 62.1 billion, registering private market share of 22%. The renewal premium grew by 28% to 73.5 billion, which accounts for 54% of the gross return premium. 
to sum up gross return premium stands at 135.6 billion with a yoy growth of 19% in terms of ap premium stands at 30.3 billion registering a growth of 4% out of this individual ap stands at 27.1 billion with growth of 4% during the quarter ended june 30 2023 Total 4.19 lakh new policies were issued. Since 2010, the company has maintained its leadership position in number of policies issued and consistently delivered year-on-year -year growth for the last 10 years. This reflects the clear growth uh, goal of the company to increase the penetration and achieve holistic growth. Total new business sum assured registered a growth of 44% over corresponding period last year. Uh, as compared to a growth of 42% at the industry level let me give you the details about the product mix uh, as on june 23 our guaranteed non par savings product uh, contributed 14% of individual new business premium and on individual ap basis 22% individual ulip new business premium is at 19.3 billion which now constitutes 48% of individual new business premium growth in ulip is attributed to positive movement in equity markets individual protection new business premium is at 2.1 billion registering a yoy growth of 5% again this is against the previous year quarter one uh, strong growth of 55% where individual protection was showing a downward trend for the industry group protection stands at 5.7 billion with a growth of 15% credit like new business premium has grown by 8% and stands at Four and a half billion. On AP basis, protection contributes twelve percent of new business and registered a growth of seventeen percent. Annuity business is at thirteen point one billion and contributes twenty one percent of new business premium. Under annuity, the company is offering immediate as well as deferred annuity option. Individual annuity business is growing at a hundred and twenty nine percent over last uh, year, the same period, and this is mainly due to. new business contribution of smart annuity plus of 11.4 billion total annuity and pension new business underwritten by the company is 18.3 billion registering a growth of 57% over the uh, previous period moving to our distribution partners with a strength of more than 58000 cifs rbi and rrb bank insurance business contributes a share of 66% and grew by 21% in individual new business premium and on individual ap basis it stands at 18 and a half billion with a growth of 6% agency registered new business premium growth of 23% and contributes 19% in new business premium agency channel individual ap stands at 7.2 billion as on june 20 uh, 30 2023 the total number of agents stands at 222822 a growth of 38% over the pe previous period during the quarter the company added a net of 14048 agents during the quarter ended june 30 2023 other channel including direct corporate agents brokers online and web aggregators grew by 62% in terms of individual new business premium and 18% in individual ap protection business through our uh, through other channels registered a growth of 63% on ap basis about the company's profitability the pat for the quarter ended june 30 2023 stands at 3.8 billion with 45% growth yoy our solvency remains strong at 215% value of new business stands at 8.7 billion UNB margin is at 28.8% for the quarter ended June 30 2023 the shift in UNB is mainly on account of increase in share of ulip business as compared to the previous year operational efficiency uh, the opex ratio stands at 6.8% for the quarter ended June 30 2023 our total cost ratio stands at 10.8% for the quarter ended June 30 2023 with respect to persistency of individual regular premium and limited premium paying policy 13 month persistency stands at 85.1% the company has registered a significant improvement in the 37th and 61st month persistency by 262 basis points and 645 basis points respectively as mentioned in my opening remarks assets and management stands at 3.28 trillion as at june 30 2023 having growth of 25% as compared to june 30 2022
the company continues efficient usage of technology for simplification of process with 99% of individual proposals being submitted digitally 52% of individual proposals are processed through automated underwriting before i conclude on behalf of the management i would like to clearly state that the company's aspiration of fy24 growth remains unchanged and our endeavor is to deliver better than industry growth secondly our promoter and bank partner sbi is aligned with our holistic growth target and we have set out detailed plans to further leverage the network in depth through data analytics clear performance benchmarking segmented approach towards niche markets segments etc our agency channel has been a flag bearer and has outpaced the private industry in many parameters our aim is to maintain the undisputed leadership position among private players through capacity building both in terms of quantity that is number of agents as well as quality that is financial advisory considering the needs of the customer lastly as mentioned in my fy23 annual results call the value of new business will continue to grow at a healthy rate and margin will be range bound to conclude we continuously endeavor to maintain our leadership position and continue to further increase our market share by offering products that meet the evolving needs of our customers with our widespread robust distribution network complemented by digital technology and above all our people power we are well positioned to capitalize the growth opportunities offered in the dynamic insurance landscape companies aligned uh, the companies aligned with the regulatory vision and will continue to focus on various reforms enabling deeper penetration of life insurance insurance industry thank you all now and we are happy to take any questions that you may have thank you very much we will now begin the question and answer session anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on their touchstone telephone if you wish to remove yourself from the question queue you may press star and 2 Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Avinash Singh from MK Global. Please go ahead. Yeah, good evening. Uh, thanks a lot for this opportunity. Uh, two questions. Uh, the first one on growth. I uh, recall your closing remark just now. Yet I just want some clarification. Uh, uh, that in FY23 your growth had a different pattern, and of course you did not have a high ticket, you uh, you know high ticket non-link share as like your peers. Now in that backdrop, if I recall, a 20% kind of a individual rated premium growth was the kind of ambition for FY24. Is that 20% uh, you know uh, kind of a number is it still holds true? So that's one that uh, I mean in terms of because I mean your uh, product mix had been different than PS. That's why I'm going for absolute rather than uh, talking of uh, relative numbers. So that's on growth. On distribution, uh, my question is uh, if you can provide some color on non SBI banks. I mean the likes of the yes Indian the non SBI bank how they have been doing in terms of growth, what they are saying in the mix, and second related to that. Agency, I mean, uh, you have been a very, very kind of a proactive in augmenting your agency network in the last one, one and a half year. Uh, uh, I, I mean, in that backdrop, I mean, uh, do sort of a, you expect this agency channel growth to accelerate further uh, uh, over the year, or is it that okay, this uh, growth is going to be muted this year? Thank you. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much uh, for the question. The growth. Let me assure you that we are looking at uh, uh, the same kind of growth that we have uh, been talking about. 20 to 25 percent is what I would like to see. Uh, but yeah, 20 percent is definitely what we would uh, uh, expect. Uh, so that is the first thing regarding growth. Now coming to the agency channel. So agency, we have uh, been growing the number of agents and we have made some structural changes. So. Uh, you know, the results will be visible uh, over the next uh, three quarters uh, for this year. Uh, you will see in Q2 itself uh, the, the results uh, of what, uh, you know, the changes that we have brought about in uh, agency. And uh, this will be, uh, this has always been the most productive agency, I think, in the private industry. 
and we continue to we will continue to be at the very forefront of productivity activation uh, and also the number of agents that we have so uh, as you can already already uh, as i have already said we have 2.23 lakh agents and uh, uh, we are in improving the productivity and activation now coming to the other banks uh, bank partnerships so uh, we have uh, you know excellent uh, yeah so uh, we have excellent business there uh, right now we have 5% growth in the first quarter but uh, you know going forward like uh, you would have noticed that we had a, a fantastic first quarter last year which was like uh, record breaking i should say we had 86% growth uh, overall uh, in the individual uh, rated and uh, then we had you know overall 55% growth in uh, you know uh, the total mbp now that to top that is very difficult and we have still managed a slim growth over that but uh, you know this just shows the kind of potential that we have and we continue to perform at those levels uh, and uh, so it's uh, the, the last year's numbers uh, uh, they were coming on the back of uh, uh, some uh, not so good performances for the first quarters but uh, this performance it comes right after the uh, good performance of last year so i think uh, that put in very well for us uh, in terms of the other bank partnerships also the start uh, the first quarter is always you know to be compared with what uh, growth we had last year and going forward we will again you know we aspire to have a good growth number uh, plus 20 in any case uh, is what we are looking for okay sir uh, if you can help so contribution of other banks in ap terms i mean what their percentage currently 3% uh, approximately 3% okay sir thank you yeah so something you know uh, i love to thank you thank you the next question is from the line of adarsh from clsa please go ahead uh, just uh, a couple of questions. Um, uh, sir, sorry to but the line for you is not very clear. We request you to please use the handset while you're speaking. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, uh, my question is on the uh, on the UN guidelines. Uh, like after the changes in the UN guidelines. Hello, can you hear us? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I'm sorry, I was not able to hear you at all. Yeah. Uh, yes, so your line went on hold, sir. Yes, you can. Ah, uh, yeah, okay. So the question was, sir, uh, the uh, expensive management guidelines have been revised. So there is uh, chatter around uh, what payouts can you do to uh, SBI? Can one expect uh, renegotiations and hence uh, commissions or cost ratios to go up? If you can clarify, if you have any discussions, uh, thought process for the next 20 months. Thank you. So, in terms of insurance, you know, it uh, depends on how you, uh, uh, what value you create for the customers and what value you create for the distributors. Obviously, it's going to be a balance there. With the changed uh, regulation, we will be reevaluating, and uh, you know, uh, it uh, requires us to have a, uh, a policy around that. So our policy uh, uh, will be, I mean, is, is under formulation. The moment we have a clear policy on that, we will take it forward. And that uh, sir, sorry, but the line for you is breaking up in between. We are not able to hear what you're saying. If you could please use the better connection, sir. Yeah, I'll try. Otherwise, I'll come back, right? So, so just wanted to understand if uh, 
these increased payouts will affect our BNP margins. Any uh, lower BNP margins you could indicate, uh, even if uh, the payouts are uh, going up. Right? So what is situation? You know, this is a very fluid kind of situation. Not just because of these EOM guidelines or something. Earlier, also we were uh, very comfortably placed in terms of the uh, percentage of expenses that we had, uh, considering our EOM limits, and also we never went for the EOM uh, limit. Uh, you know, up to the EOM limit. Uh, in the past also and we are not you know looking to these guidelines as an excuse to uh, change the way we look at business so uh, our business will continue uh, uh, to be fair to our partners and our uh, customers so i will not uh, put any numbers out here and i will definitely not like to uh, you know, commit to any kind of uh, drastic change in in my way of doing things. But what we will ensure, which we have been doing in the past, and that is why we have been so successful as a company, is that we will make sure that there is enough on the table for the distributor and the customer. Uh, from shareholder perspective, sir, this one to understand. Uh, uh, I, 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 uh, yeah, sorry, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not able to hear. Can you kindly come back for the next question? Sorry. I'm very sorry about it, but uh, we, we, I really can't make out, you know, I, uh, this is uh, breaking a lot. Yes, uh, sir, the sure. line is breaking up in between. We request you to please rejoin the queue after you connect with a better connection, sir. Sure, thanks. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sanket Goda from Avendis Spark. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thank you for the opportunity, sir. So, sir, uh, uh, as I see, the, uh, the margin compression largely happen, uh, seems to have happened because of your non par contribution coming down, and, and that's the only product which has uh, which has declined on year-on-year -year basis, while all other products seems to have done well. So, so just wanted to understand this. This is a conscious decision to not to grow. Because I'm trying to link this number with the persistency also, because because your persistency in the uh, near term cohorts, that is 13 month and 25 month, has has uh, deteriorated compared to the last year or, or, or um, declined compared to the last year. Is is the experience being poor, and that's why you're conscious to not to grow this particular business, or 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 or, or how do we read it? Because because uh, along with the uh, uh, when 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 I see the previous question, if, if the expense towards the parent channel. Is, is is supposed to increase and non par is not going to grow then then it will have an impact on the margin just just wanted to understand your view on this particular point sir yeah so sanket uh, good question what uh, i would like to say is that you have noticed very correctly that it is a non par component which has actually uh, led to a reduction in the margin uh, vnb margin so that is absolutely correct but now you know to read too much into that would be uh, you know, I think slightly uh, jumping the gun because, like I said, last uh, uh, last year, the same quarter, we had a huge growth in our premiums, and one of the contributing factors was that uh, we had this huge pent-up demand for a non-par guaranteed income product, which we did not have earlier. We had a non-par guaranteed uh, lump sum payment product, which was doing very well, uh, Smart Platinum Assure. But we launched uh, uh, Smart Platinum Plus uh, last year around March, and March end, in, uh, to be precise, about seven, eight days in March. And then uh, the first quarter, so the huge pent-up demand that we had and the agents and our distributors had already gauged uh, due to which we had launched that product, uh, that got taken up in the first uh, quarter and that is why you are seeing a uh, degrowth in this uh, quarter with respect to the non-par uh, product. But going forward, we uh, are looking at a very steady growth in our non-par uh, portfolio. And there is no conscious effort to reduce or change the mix. Uh, you will probably recollect that every quarter I keep saying that we keep the customer at the center. And it is not a joke. We do keep the customer at the center. We offer products which are suitable. This quarter we have seen a good attraction for ULIP. Uh, product returning. ULIP has always been a good product for us. ULIP has returned. One reason could be the market's uh, excellent performance uh, 
and our own funds excellent performance over the last 5 years and this is something which people are looking at last year with the covid uncertainties non par guaranteed was a very uh, what do you call it very uh, uh, very very favored kind of product and uh, i don't see the demand going away anywhere it is only that compared to last year first quarter which again i'll emphasize uh, was one of the uh, highest growth quarters that we had uh, that is the only reason why we are seeing a slight dip uh, in that okay. to just to clarify last year non par was in the first quarter was about 30% of our business right. by the time the year ended it was about 24% yeah and this quarter there is a little slow start we are at about 21 22% of our business coming from non par <laughs> so we would expect around similar 24 25% of our business coming from non par so last year first quarter was a little abrasion like our md just explained got it you know, the reason i was asking sir that uh, a number absolute number if i see it is 5 5.8 billion rupees or 580 crore seems to be meaningful lower compared to the run rate of 9 932000 crores what you did uh, 902000 crores what you did last year in every quarter so that's the reason i was just thinking that 580 seems to be meaningfully low number in ap terms uh, compared to what you did every quarter last year and 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 and, and, and i'm also was trying to uh, understand the position if fall in 13th and 25th is something to read there or 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 any reason for the position if fall yeah so that is something which we you know we we think that Uh, every year we have this uh, you know whenever we see that there is a uh, dip or in persistence or there is no growth in persistence we uh, uh, up our uh, you know our efforts for uh, renewals and it's only a question of renewal a lot of people were stressed uh, in the last 3 years uh, in terms of premium payments etc and i think the priorities also you know keep shifting so uh, it's only a question of Uh, how much follow up we continue to keep doing and we, uh, uh, i think you will see uh, within the next quarter uh, you know all these uh, things uh, normalizing got to say i i need this this on on the previous question if you can i mean honestly uh, just wanted to understand because our uams are substantially lower compared to the uh, uh, peers Uh, uh and given given now there is no commission cap uh, honestly to to any product uh, so there is a likely possibility that to pay out uh, to to our distribution channels especially parent uh, could go up and it could have a potential impact on the margins or or any any measures you have taken uh, to to counter that impact if it just if it happens see i will only say one thing that uh, uh, our partners and especially sbi as a partner has been very responsible in uh, you know looking at the customers requirements and also in uh, growing the business responsibly uh, we do not uh, uh, envisage a situation where you know we are put in a position where uh, we will have to uh, you know dip into the customers value uh, to pay uh, Uh, commissions or anything and we think that the the payouts that are being made right now are largely in line with what should be uh, paid out uh, there will be people uh, in the industry who will probably uh, try to gain market share or uh, whatever and there will be uh, distributors who will demand more and more because just because uh, the leave is available somewhere but i think irda has also come out with a vast set of guidelines on what we need to look at before we formulate our uh, policy with regard to commission payment and um it is not that he irda has permitted uh, companies to pay the entire um as commission and then go around because the a lot of uh, uh, senior management compensation and everything is tied up with the kind of performance that uh, each of these uh, companies is going to have so i think uh, irda as a regulator also recognizes realizes that uh, there is a potential for uh, some kind of a uh, you know misunderstanding in these uh, guidelines and therefore they have come up with very 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 extensive guidelines on what we should look at uh, while uh, arriving at the commission uh, rates and the policy uh, uh, you know the board approved commission policy so i don't see a drastic change coming up we like i said we will keep 
calibrating what constitutes good value for the customer and what constitutes good value for the distributor and obviously like you said the shareholder so you know all these uh, have to be balanced got it sir uh, and, and last one uh, is there productivity in the presentation is being mentioned as 4.7 million rupees per branch in ndp terms uh, which is which is almost uh, one of the best in the industry so so just wanted to understand the state bank of india growth incrementally will be driven by productivity gains I mean, is there further room for productivity gains or or it is there all the possibilities are there there is enough scope and uh, india is hugely under penetrated as an insurance market so there is no dearth of growth it is uh, to increase awareness and to reach out to each and every person uh, with his uh, you know with a product that will suit his needs do the analysis properly explain the product properly and you have a customer got it sir ah that's it from my side thank you thank you very much thank you the next question is from the line of rishi junjunwala from iifl institutional equities please go ahead yeah uh, thanks for the opportunity a couple of questions so firstly on retail protection so while we did really well uh, you know in fy 22 when most of the other players were struggling the growth protection over the past four five quarters if we really look at it the growth hasn't been that robust given the kind of under penetration we see in retail protection and we are also seeing some of our peers who were lagging earlier have started to pick up uh, in terms of growth for weaker base of course so just wanted to understand i mean um, what is it that uh, you know we can do to accelerate it or do you think there are any particular reasons why this thing is uh, slightly tepid than where it could be no protection see protection we have been uh, continuously growing protection so there is not a single uh, quarter i believe when we have actually had our protection dip or had an have a negative growth so we have been constantly growing uh, right now we have grown at 6% and uh, uh, going forward you know like we see the same trajectory like uh, the previous years whatever we have grown uh, in the previous years in production we will grow uh, uh, grow production has got a good uh, uh, good potential i should say uh, but uh, what does happen is that when you have uh, uh, very good growth in all uh, the products then you know it is quite possible that in percentage terms there may be a uh, slightly lower uh, growth uh, seen here in production because everything is growing so everything grows at 20% or something uh, so you know production even if it grows slightly uh, less uh, uh, you know in terms of actual numbers uh, appears to have degrown in percentage terms so that that is the only thing that i would say i don't think there is any particular thing to be read into uh, the production growth numbers understood and the secondly on on uh, you know the margin trajectory for fiscal 24 um so just wanting to understand uh, you know is there any particular kind of mix that you are thinking would play out through the course of the year given the kind of changes that have happened on taxation on um and everything which could potentially change the the mix of the margins especially on the product side i don't think so you know because i i i may sound very boring i will again say that we do not push a margin down the throat of a customer we ask the customer what he wants offer him his needs and then we have a whole bouquet of products so he selects from that you know it's not as if i am saying ki mera ye sabse jyada margin hai ye main bech do usko so that is not the approach that we take at all and i don't uh, think that we are going to change it uh, right now uh, the thing with uh, margins is that it is a uh, you know it cannot keep going up and up uh, somewhere the customer value proposition will actually take a hit if the margin keeps uh, rising you know uh, to give a very small example if you get 100% margin there is no way the customer is going to get any value out of it so obviously there is going to be some kind of a, a limit to the uh, uh, margins that we can achieve now having said that what do we do to maximize the margin given the product mix that we uh, think our pro- customers would take so then we design the products in such a way that they are beneficial to the customer as well as to the distributor and obviously leave some margin for us 
and the margin is left only because uh, there is a long term value uh, associated with that product and uh, so uh, to answer your question we would be looking to continue our non par uh, product uh, then we have a very good uh, demand in ulip we will continue with that we have a positive margin on ulip also and uh, that is a very good uh, thing protection we will continue to grow and i think with this uh, protection credit life uh uh non par uh, and you know the kind of product mix that we have we should be able to uh, uh, continue to have these margins and i think our current margin is also very good at 28.8 i think it's a it's a good margin sir so, so just uh, uh, to clarify um have we reached up equilibrium on at a product level margin and so as a result uh, from here on the margin expansion would largely be driven by the mix change is that a fair way to do possible but i don't see the mix change and all see what happens like last year we had a mix change and we had a jump in the margins but this is not something which we can expect again and again because there is a certain kind of a demand that is available in the market maybe if uh, tomorrow we come and see that there is a, another product or something which uh, contributes a better better margin which has got a great demand maybe there is an, another spike uh, coming up uh, at that point of time i can't see anything right now uh, we would be very happy to be around this range understood thank you so much for an organic basis by improving other parameters not only that i mean i don't think margin is a very big uh, uh, thing you know it's a good story to write but i still think that you sell more and more uh, you know that is the way to make a company more profitable you know you sell more and more it's like a supermarket and a, 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 a boutique store yeah, in a boutique store you will sell two and you get a fat margin on that in a the supermarket you sell everything and you get steady margins on that uh, you have more customers coming in customer who buys atta today will buy pista tomorrow but in a boutique store he comes to buy only pista and if he gets pista from the department store he doesn't even come to your store to buy pista so you know i don't think uh, that it works that way we are not looking at the margins margins per se but we are looking at the sustainability of the business in the long run how many customers new customers we can get how we can put them up the ladder of the margin uh, journey understood so thank you so much and all the best thank you bye bye thank you the next question is from the line of dipanjan ghosh from city group please go ahead hi uh, good evening just two questions from my side uh, one on the nvt business um, is this some color on uh, what changes are made also in the product reach i think that you witnessed uh, uh, what is the strategy around that sir but the line for you you sound muffled on the line sir uh, is this better yes this is much better sir please go ahead yeah so just two questions from my side uh, first on the anvity business if you can give some color on the individual anvity part uh, was there any product repricing or what is the strategy around that going ahead and second i think on the agency you agency you mentioned there has been some uh, strategic changes uh, which should give uh, higher growth or deliver from 2q onwards so if you can kind of elaborate on that part yeah thank you uh, on the annuity you know if you look at the individual annuity we have uh, grown uh, by 128% in uh, individual annuity so that's uh, it's basically you know there are two two parts to it one i think the annuity rates were pretty decent uh, last year so that uh, uh, contributed but it also contributed that our people you know reached out and created awareness and uh, they were able to you know get people to think about their uh, post retired retirement life and uh, were able to sell more annuity so that is uh, you know as far as the annuity piece is concerned uh, there is nothing much uh, to do there uh, only thing is that we will be looking at uh, these products very carefully and align the rates with the market uh, so that you know we don't we are not too much on either side 
uh, of the market. Uh, coming to your question on the agency, we have made certain changes. You know, I would not like to elaborate on all the changes that we are uh, making, but some of the changes is that we are uh, recruiting more and more agents and we are having more engagement with the agents and we are also helping them to uh, garner leads. So, uh, so we are doing a lot of activities where uh, the agents can get leads. Uh, we are also showing them, you know, we are training them much better and we are uh, having more and more uh, closer interactions with uh, uh, our agents to show them that they already have a, uh, you know, a, a good market around their, in their own environment so that they can go and prospect for business much better. So the, these are the two changes. There will be a huge uh, uh, difference that you see in the days to come. As uh, regard numbers, we have already started growing the numbers. The productivity will follow. Uh, sure. Uh, thank you, Anandu. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nishchen Chawate from Kota. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, am I audible? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you, you know, you reported a uh, you know fairly impressive seventeen percent growth in units in policy. So uh, I was I was wondering what is driving this? Is it is it just that because equity markets are doing well? Uh, you know, is it just that uh, you know the uptake is strong, or uh, is there a conscious push from your side for units? No, I don't think we have ever uh, pushed or, you know, stopped pushing uh, for ULIP. Uh, it, it, does, it is a function of the, you know, overall uh, market, the, the way people are perceiving, like, you know, you would see in the last couple of years, a lot of non-power guaranteed got sold. Uh, so it was purely a function of the uh, experience of the last uh, three years where you know you were uncertain about your income and all and the first thing that you wanted to protect was uh, future income and then now you know the people are thinking about uh, the markets going up and a lot of uh, people we already had a very good uh, very good uh, customer uh, feel around our uh, ulip products uh, we we always were doing very well in fact, uh, some of the products that the other products that we got in was because we were uh, slightly over uh, weight on uh, ULIPS, I should say. So that is why we got many of the other products now. Uh, so therefore, the mix has become much better. But we are uh, we, we, we are confident that uh, you know ULIPS will continue to. Uh, do well because it's a very good product. We have been giving excellent returns uh, to the customers uh, over three years, five years. If you see our returns, they have been uh, fantastic. We keep explaining to our customers that the longer you stay with us, the more money you can make. And also you stay protected with insurance. So that is the most important thing. You know, while you are building up your corpus, you are covered with insurance, which no other investment will give. So this is something which actually works for us, and we will continue with that. Sure. Uh, you know, to this the point that, uh, you know, Abhishek, you made that uh, you're looking at, uh, you know, the share of non par to kind of increase from 23 to like 25 by the end of the year. I mean, if you're looking at the direction of the market, I think in all possibilities, you know, non par will remain here or go down, given the way interest rates are headed. And uh, probably ULIP will kind of continue to do well. So, you, you know, uh, you know, in that sense, is it, is it kind of fair to say that that maybe the the business mix of, of last year, you know, <clears throat> may not really be what uh, this year would look like? So the business mix is not really going to change much. Uh, I mean, like you know, unless there is a sudden uh, spurt in one of the the, the demand for either, any of these uh, products, you know, sudden. Uh, uh, spurred in demand for ULIP or sudden demand. Otherwise, you know, like uh, the non part product is a guaranteed product, is a very good product. And, you know, when uh, rates are going down also, then there is a very good need to lock into the, uh, the higher rates. So that is something which uh, definitely will play on the minds of people. And 
there will be a demand for that product. Uh, there are different kinds of people. You know, some people would like to get into the market-related kind of returns. Some people would like the safer uh, kind of returns. And uh, you, uh, the non-farm product still offers a uh, tax benefit uh, if it is taken. You know, if if it is below five lakhs in a year. And uh, our big market is uh, in that uh, segment. So I don't I don't see a uh, drastic change in the oh, yes i mean like you know with patterns and all you can never say it is uh, today i say 60 uh, 25 uh, 15 or something and tomorrow it turns out to be 58 28 something i mean like it's okay i mean like we are okay with that because we have the risk management strategies and we also know how where to invest and get good returns so, you know the second question is essentially on group protection you know that has grown pretty fast. So this is all, uh, uh, you know, group group protection or yeah, group protection. You know, it's a lumpy kind of thing. I mean, you get uh, you work on uh, various corporates for some time, and then you get uh, the business. So it's it's a big function of uh, two three things. You know, one is your connect your ability to service. You have to prove that you know your product is uh, will be uh, serviced uh, quickly. Your uh, employees will uh, you know when when they come for a claim or something they will be serviced very fast and uh, will not have to go through trouble and all that. So that uh, you know once the uh, corporate is convinced, then you know the business comes up in a big amount. Sometimes it's a thousand people uh, who are covered. Sometimes it's ten thousand who are covered. I mean, like it's it's a very lumpy kind of thing. You can't say the efforts for each corporate would be approximately the same kind of effort, but the numbers that you get will be different from different for different corporates. So, how much would be the growth in group credit? And then we have credit life also. So, credit life, you know, that is something which uh, has been growing very well for us, and I think it will continue to grow very well because. Uh, uh, disbursements are going to keep growing as the market grows, as everything economy grows, uh, the disbursements will grow and as the disbursements grow, the attachment rates will uh, be uh, better and uh, you know, the even with the same attachment rate, the uh, amount of credit life we sell will be higher. Perfect, that answers my question. Thank you very much. Thank you. And all the best. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Madhukar Lada from Nuvama Wealth Management. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, thank you for taking my question. Uh, so, a couple of uh, themes. One, uh, see on persistency, uh, any particular cohort where it is, where persistency is lagging, is it in the non par segment or because we sold a lot of non-power last year, so 13 month persistency is getting impacted because of that. Uh, some color over there would be helpful. Second, what is the timeline for all this discussion with SBI on uh, you know the increased uh, commission payouts, if at all? And uh, related to that, uh, have we started? Uh, building any part of it, so you know, uh, based on you know whatever your expectation is, are we building any part of it in our current uh, VNB uh, that we have declared right now at 28.8 percent? So, uh, so yeah, uh, and and uh, finally, uh, the agency channel this quarter uh, year over year has declined uh, by about five percent. Uh, uh, any color on that? What has uh, resulted in uh, that happening? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, persistence, you know, I think uh, uh, we agree that there is a slight dip in persistence in the 13th uh, month and uh, slightly higher dip in the 25th month cohorts. But uh, like I said, you know, it's something which we should be able to remedy with. Uh, closer calling and uh, you know explaining to our customers we have a very good uh, team that does this and we will uh, uh, you know in the past also in the last uh, three four years we have always seen that whenever there is been some kind of a flatness in the persistency we have always been able to <coughs> increase it 
and uh, uh, right now if you compare the persistency with what we had 3 years back we have very good persistency we have improved the persistency like anything it's uh, if you are comparing with march 23 yes uh, there is a slight dip in 13th and 25th uh, no particular product uh, contributing significantly to uh, this thing as far as my own analysis is concerned of course we will be looking at uh, even more granular data and trying to see if we need to do something uh, some uh, you know follow up somewhere much more uh, but that that's about it uh, coming to the timelines uh, we i never said that we were in discussions with sbi or anything so i don't think you know that whole question arises uh, sbi is a very close partner and uh, you know we have many other partners also now in banks uh, discussions do keep happening all the time on all the aspects of the business so i will not uh, say that you know we are uh, talking about commission or whatever or whatever so there is nothing for me to say at this point of time on that i think my earlier answer was very very comprehensive on the eom and commission so i don't want to say anything further to that agency yes you are right there is a 5% uh, drop in uh, agency uh, numbers but as i said we have initiated a number of steps and we have grown the numbers quite uh, healthily and uh, you know our initiatives are already there to uh, to keep the distribution engaged and also to train them and to uh, make them uh, so it's not uh it's it, it 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 is you know by design that we have a, the best agency in the private uh, sector it's not by luck or by chance that we have the best agency in spite of having one of the strongest banker relationships we still have the biggest agency we are our agencies uh, uh, crossed 4000 crores last year which is much more than uh, many of the uh, companies uh, total business uh, in the industry so uh, really speaking you know there is nothing much to say about agency uh, uh, development efforts are going on to make the take the agency channel to the next level and uh, yes this i would say that this is a kind of flattening that comes when you are doing a lot of development efforts so just uh, one thing uh, have you uh, built in any increase in eom uh, in 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 your margin uh, reporting of this quarter i would request to this to like what next out thanks madam uh, see uh, if you see our uh, uh, even if for the on 31st march this year we do that you see that we make the operating profit even on account of the persistency and we always keep saying that when we set our basic statement assumption we always use the assumption which is sustainable in longer term we don't capitalize the moment up, up and down to that extent our journey margin and assumption used in the computing the journey margin is well stabilized and with the certain fall in the percentage is not going to impact our uh, percentage assumption in fact uh, if you recall uh, in the mark we explained that there is a further scope uh, to further uh, uh, improve the percentage on account of the uh, experience so to conclude i don't see this experience will have any adverse impact in our journey margins so my question was more uh, with respect to eom so if uh, are we building any uh, increase in eom in our view in the assumptions and eom i, I think if you see this our uh, we always use expenses so what our md also explain on the eom part that our expense we are most efficient company we use expenses and i don't see there will be much impact will come on the eom, EOM perspective as well like we have not build up anything that uh, going to be impact adversely see typically you see we don't change our assumptions in the first quarter thing so we change it once a year when we do that we will have a review of everything including your any expenses that might come understood sir okay all right uh, that's it and all the best sir yeah thank you thank you the next question is from the line of m w kim from jp morgan securities asia pacific limited please go ahead 
Yeah, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, I have uh, two questions. The first is about uh, the, you know, the new business value movement. So could you please share a bit detail on you know, the operational assumption changes uh, per year? So the, would it be more related to the, the you know, better than expected loading margin due to the bigger scale or the other factors like persistence, as you already mentioned, or the mortality? So just want to understand that the way we would see the positive data on the product margin. Um, and the next question is about the, the regions on the higher the surrender ratio. Is it due to the, your previous the product related to the, the savings policy? Yeah, that's true. Thank you. So, so I will explain the margin is coming on account of uh, product mix, and then we explain that we don't change the, uh, any assumptions in the quarter in. What we do that we look into the year in experience. Based on that, we set up our exemption. Our exemptions are truly aligned to the relevant uh, actual experience and emerging trend to that extent. So to, uh, to to that we have incorporated. And uh, in this quarter, we have not changed any any exemptions. Because we're comparing with the last June to this this June, and we, in the month of March, when we close our hearing, we have made the assumption change. That's the reason we see the we only walk. There is a impact reflecting in the assumption change. On the surrender ratio, which you were mentioned about higher as compared to last quarter, it was uh, predominantly due to the uh, uh, four years back products of the ULIP which have been surrendered and the payouts are happening now. And because the market is on a higher side, so the AUM of those funds have been gone up substantially. So that is the reason the spike which has been seen here as a surrender ratio is being higher side. Otherwise, there is no uh, 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 difference between the current surrender or the previous surrenders. Yeah, that's all clear. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Supratim Datta from Ambit Capital. Please go ahead. Thanks for the opportunity. So, our three questions, starting with the first one. So, you have indicated that productivity for SBI grants is around 47 lakhs. Could you let us know what is the productivity in the metro branches versus the non metro branches? That could be one. Number two would be when I look at your VND walk. I can see that there has been a 110 basis point negative impact from operating uh, economic assumptions. And that typically translates into a 100 basis point risk free rate movement. So just wanted to understand, you know, what has resulted in this movement. Because when I look at the e curve, I don't see that, you know, there has been a that, this significant movement. So that's number two. And lastly, on the group protection side, could you give us the split between group term and credit life and what is the attachment rate in SBI life? So those are the three questions. Yeah, so uh, what was the first so, one? So the last one, if you, I take the first one, uh, about 45 uh, of, uh, is uh, coming from credit life and the remaining is from group, uh, uh, you know, GTI, GTI. group GTI. Uh, that is the last yeah. question that I'm asking, answering first. Yeah, the first one was uh, regarding the breakup. Uh, so, uh, you know, really speaking, it's a, it's a very vast uh, kind of thing. So we give the average, I think it is very indicative. I don't think there is anything to read into individual, uh, you know, metro okay. figures or... Okay. So on economic figures. assumptions, Pitesh will speak to you. Yeah. So, so if you see the economic assumption, uh, if you see the yield curve uh, as compared to the Q1 previous year, Q1 FI23 versus uh, Q1 FI24, in the shorter end, you see there is yield curve is steep enough, whereas in the longer uh, uh, term, there is a yield curve is flat end. So what happens, because in this quarter, we have the yield, yield, high proportion of yield curve, right? so that will have some impact, adverse impact on that on the unit, whereas uh, later duration when income is flattened, we have a, a, another negative impact on some of the uh, non uh, traditional business. So that's the reason we see this impact. We're comparing this from the last quarter, 
Fi23 versus Q1 Fi24. Got it. Got it. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Neeraj Toshniwal from UBS India. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, so, sorry, I'm harping on the same question. The IT payout increase to SBI Bank also wanted to color on the payouts to other than IT for bank, uh, other than SBI Bank. Uh, what is the likely terms will be IT? Or it will be having some revisions there as well. So, we, uh, you know, I wouldn't like to discuss individual relationships uh, or the rates at this point of time. I can say that you know we have been uh, sticking to the uh, the guidelines issued by the regulator, and we have been able to do excellent business all along. And I don't uh, see us coming under any pressure just because there is a change in the uh, rules. Like I said, we will keep the customer value and the distributor value in mind. Obviously, I have to think about my shareholder value also. So all three things put together will determine what we do. We have been doing extremely well. I don't see a sudden drastic change in our course. Can we expect uh, contributions from other than SJ Bank to increase going forward, given there would be very less, might be difference between the reach in the two banks now? They see, I'll tell you one thing. Uh, wherever, uh, whatever relationships we already have with the bank, uh, many of them, we have a good percentage of the business that they are doing. So, you know, we, we have been adhering to all the all the rules earlier and we have still been able to manage, uh, manage to do very good business uh, with the other banks. So, I think going forward also, we can expect good growth. Okay, and in your uh, opening comments, you did mention on Nita and the, uh, what what are we doing there and or uh, can we yeah, expect, uh, what you were saying opening comments what did i say uh, you didn't mention data analytics as one of your points so wanted more color what are we doing there uh and can that lead to so it works it works in many many ways uh one of the ways that it works is that you know our bank partners we work with them and we do uh data analytics like for example you know uh, the uh, you know, apps that we are able to do. So in this first quarter, we have covered 2.35 lives with uh, term insurance. How do we do it? Very simple. The bank, uh, uh, along with our uh, um, uh, analytics, the algorithms, they uh, pitch to the customer a particular uh, product, and they uh, the customer can buy it in three clicks. So that's one of the examples uh, that I have. The other thing is that we use it on our own uh, data to make sure that, you know, we give the next best product to our customers to uh, to pass it on to the distributor that this is the product that you should be selling to the customer now, and this is the need for his, uh, for the customer, etc. A uh, lot of ways in which we are using data analytics, so, you know, uh, Abhijit, would you like to add something? No, so we also we work on, persist yeah. on persistency also, we are yeah, using yeah. data analytics. Yeah, so the propensity to pay, so cool. we, we follow up more on, you know, wherever we find that the analytics throws that somebody has got a, a lower propensity to uh, pay the premiums on time, then we work on those people and then, you know, we get, uh, so, so a hundred million ways in which we are using it. In predictive analysis is one of them. So just accept what kind of profile is and how, what kind of product we can offer to them in terms of the next best product. So, uh, so basically, uh, why I'm asking is because we are setting our own call, call center apart from you know getting the business from the local channel because it was very expensive or much higher than the uh, our own cost. Then wanted to understand if there is some integration. There is a lot of break. I, I, I think it's not about our data analytics, it's not about the call center. Our data analytics means try to. Yeah, so call center, see, uh, what you are saying, uh, Pritesh, I think what he means to see is whether we are using the call contact centers also along with the analytics. Uh, our our model is that we don't uh, directly uh, directly sell uh, when we get a customer through a particular channel, so the channel will sell for us. Any analytics is done through the channel. Sure. Thank, you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. 
We have the next question from the line of Swarnab Mukherjee from BNK Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity, sir. So, uh, three questions from my side. First of all, uh, so uh, SBI uh, has shown um, you know a little bit softer growth compared to what it was historically in the last two quarters. So, just wanted to understand uh, you know what is going on there. Is there any uh, change of in stance uh, for, for the distributor towards a particular product segment, which is uh, resulting in this. So some insights on that would be helpful. Uh, that is the first one. Uh, secondly, in terms of the uh, growth guidance that you have mentioned uh, around 20%, so just wanted to check whether this is in terms of uh, total EP. And uh, if so, uh, given that uh, this quarter was a uh, uh, slow growth uh, quarter, I think for the remaining three quarters, you need to grow at uh, fairly strong rates to meet this guidance. So uh, want a little bit more granularity uh, on your thoughts on, you know, from where do you expect this growth to come from? And also given that third quarter last year was a pretty strong quarter, so you will have a high base there. So wanted to understand that. Uh, and thirdly, sir, you had uh, mentioned in the opening comment that uh, margins uh, going ahead would be range bound. So uh, I just wanted to know, uh, you know, uh, from you, where where do you see the lower limit of that? For example, since you, were, you have mentioned that ULIPs have seen a lot of traction this quarter, if the mix of ULIP goes up, then can we see uh, margin levels go back, uh, go down further? Um, so yeah, these these are broadly three things that I wanted to understand. So SBI, you know, like I said, uh, we have shown some seven percent growth in uh, SBI, and uh, in this quarter over the last quarter, and June quarter was a high growth uh, quarter over the uh, 2021 quarter, June quarter. Mm -hmm. uh, so to maintain that uh, growth and further grow on it, even by 7%, is a very decent uh, thing. And uh, going forward, you know, because uh, uh, the growth over the previous years was not so much in the later quarters, not 86% and all. So I don't think there should be an issue with our uh, growth because the numbers are already coming and uh, uh, like we uh, uh, like we said, uh, it's, a, it's just a question of you know the first quarter generally uh, used to be weak. Last year was very very good, but every year uh, the subsequent uh, quarters are very good. Especially the second and third quarters are very good, and the fourth quarter has been also very good for us uh, almost always. So this is uh, a pattern that we see, and therefore we will. Uh, end up achieving the target that we are looking for. Uh, coming to the next one, uh, uh, the margins. So margins, you know, margins are, uh, uh, I have always maintained, and this is not the first time that I am saying this, uh, I have been asked this question every quarter, and I always say that we are happy with margins around 28 to 30 percent, and we uh, continue to have hold that view. We are not going to be held uh, hostage by any particular number. You know, we are not going to change our uh, entire uh, business uh, philosophy just to maintain, uh, say, 30 or 29 or some notional number. I think 28.8 is a very good number. Uh, but at the same time, uh, we, will, we would like to be around this place. Uh, so that is why I said the range-bound thing. Uh, understood, sir. Sir, in terms of uh, SBI as a channel, if you could give some color, you know what is going on there. Yeah, so SBI, I already told you that SBI has been growing very well. Uh, over a very large uh, growth, we have been able to grow by 7%. Going forward, we will continue to grow. Okay, okay, okay. Understood, sir. Oh, understood. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much for the responses. Thank you and all the best. Thank you. All the best. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we will take one last question, which will be from the line of Prayesh Jain from Motilal Oswal. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi. Good evening. Uh, just a uh, question on Yulip. Uh, have we seen any 
makes shift towards debt products more compared to equity or is there a demand for you know and how does in case you know the way the taxes has moved do you think that the debt debt products will be more in demand and how would that impact your margin uh, on your particular so uh, we don't see any movement uh, towards debt or in fact it's uh, reverse over the last uh, three years or something we have seen a a massive shift towards uh, equity yeah okay so well, my question was more related to you know the, the, the way the taxation has moved on the mutual fund side and is there a demand for uh, that you perceive that will come up from uh, you list of debt products and that could have some implication on uh, the mix and resultant on you list market i i don't think mobile product uh, is directly comparable to the mutual fund product at all you know we uh, assure uh, we we have insurance so you know somebody who wants to build up a corpus uh, he builds up a corpus for say he is decided to build up a corpus for his child for 10 years or something and he dies after 2 years we uh, give him the sum assured which makes sure that the goal is uh, you know reached uh, by his family even without his presence there is no other uh, industry uh, financial sector which can give this uh, protection so you know the the first thing is to uh, uh, you know to disassociate uh, the normal kind of investment from insurance insurance is totally different so having said that what we see is that as a trend people who are going for ulip uh, products with our company are seeing the extremely good performance of our funds and they are taking more and more equity uh, uh, portion in their uh, portfolios great and uh, mainly on the ticket side uh, while you know you had a very low share uh, with regard to the five pack plus ticket size uh, what has been your experience in one two with respect to that cohort uh, how has that kind of seen uh, uh, how what is the kind of there of that uh, particular cohort see one thing is that you know the tax uh, angle uh, there was some kind of a tax arbitrage for uh, probably some people i don't believe that 5 lakh uh, anybody who was investing 5 lakhs was actually getting you know a very huge tax arbitrage or something but yeah possible that people who were investing more than 10 lakhs or 15 lakhs or something could have been looking at it from that kind of angle uh, but really speaking you know all these people would have been those who would have either bought annuities or invested in some similar kind of a thing and that was already taxable and now that this uh, non par guaranteed is also taxable uh, they will probably have a better choice between the two okay great thank you so much yeah, thank you thank you very much thank you I now hand the conference over to Mr. Mahesh Kumar Sharma for closing comments. Over to you, sir. Yeah, so thank you, everyone. Uh, uh, extremely kind of you to have uh, come up uh, and uh, you know uh, interacted with us. Uh, uh, you may get in touch with our investor relations team in case you have any follow-up questions. Uh, have a great uh, evening and uh, all the best. Thank you.